So before we start on this problem, uh, the momentum practice free, res free response question, second set number four, it involves a situation that we haven't really looked at too much unless it's been brought up in Khan Academy or somewhere else, but I haven't brought it up with you yet. So, and that is the idea that, that oftentimes collisions don't occur so neat that it's completely head on so that one hits and the other one goes in a straight line. Yeah, that's why we use carts, so they're on track, so we don't have to worry about the following. If an object comes up like this, notice they hit and go off at different angles. All right, and when that happens, we have to deal with the Y dimension and the X dimension separately. And so what we say is the conservation of momentum in the Y dimension so would be true. So in other words, we might write, um, well, here. So what you would end up doing is having basically two separate problems going on. You would have momentum initial Y equals momentum final Y. And at the same time, you would be looking at the momentum initial X as should be equal to the momentum final X. So you have to separate the two dimensions by coming up with, you guessed it, the components of the momenta. So just as an example, we'll take, um, let's see, let's just take a piece of paper. Easier said than done. Take this right here. All right, and let's set up a hypothetical situation that is going to be a lot like the end of the problem that we're going to do. So this way, when I get to the end, you'll see how to apply this concept instead of seeing it for the first time. That's the idea here. So we're going to call this our y-axis and this our x. And we're going to have two objects. Let's see, we'll have a blue object moving along the x-axis, positive in the positive direction. We'll give it a mass of 0.3 kilograms and a velocity of, eh, let's go f 2 meters per second which would give it a momentum of, an initial momentum of 0.6, yep, 0.6 kilogram meters per second. And it is going to collide with, what would be a good color, let's say, purple. It is going to collide with a purple object, ball, we'll say. And that purple object, we'll say, let's give it the same mass. So purple object's mass is um, 0.3 kilograms. And after they collide, let's say the purple ball goes off this way with a velocity, and the arrows may not be to scale right now, but let's say it goes off at a 20 degree angle with a velocity of, mm, let's see, I just want to make it mirror the other problem a little bit. Um, let's say its velocity is um, 0.5 meters per second. 0.5? Yeah, what the heck? We'll make it work either way. Okay. So, we have to look at the fact that this thing is going to end up being, we could look at this thing in terms of X and Y dimensions. The momenta of the purple object after the collision is going to be um, 0.5 times 0.3, which is going to be 0.15 kilogram meters Per second. All right. So here's what we have. If we look at each dimension separately, let's see. We use we can use it up here, I guess. We'll write it up here. So in the 
Let's do the y dimension. In the y dimension, the initial y momentum should equal the final y momentum. In the x dimension, which I'll put over here, the initial x momentum should equal the final x dimension um, momentum in the x dimension. All right. So what is it in the beginning? Well, it's this object in the beginning before the collision, and it's just this object. And if you look at it carefully, it doesn't have any y momentum, does it? It's moving all in the x. So the initial y is zero. But afterwards, this object definitely has a y component to its momenta. So what does that tell you has to happen with this? Think about it. It's got to end up as zero. So when this thing rebounds off, wherever it goes, its y component is going to have to be the same as this one. One's positive, one's negative, because they need to make zero. So it's going to equal the, let's see, the final y momentum of, here we'll do it this way, color code it, the blue one's final y momentum, plus the final y momentum of the purple one. But they should be equal because they got to add up to zero. Now in the x, it's a little more of a, of a, of a potluck thing. I got definitely have this though. In the beginning, all the momentum in the x is here. In fact, I already wrote it down. The initial momentum in the x is 0.6 kilogram meters per second. It is all in the possession of this guy. Equals. Afterwards, certainly this one has an x component to it. It's going this way as well. So, presumably, the other one does as well. It's going to not bounce straight off. So, we'll say the final x momentum for the purple and the final x momentum for the blue. So we have really two conservation problems here. Now, there is a decent amount of information here, specifically here. And this problem that we're going to about to do it focuses on this y dimension part and this idea that the, these two have to be the same. So in that sense, they take it easy on you. What we need to figure out is what is this? What is the purple's final y dimension momentum? Well, this vector rep represents the momentum. This would be the hypotenuse, 0.15 from here to here. This would be the opposite of the 20 degree angle. Remember, it would be sitting over here if we looked at it like that. So sine gives us the y component. So this right here is going to be 0.15 times the sine of 20 degrees. 0.15, the magnitude of the momentum, times the sine of the angle, the reference angle. All right. So 0.15 times sine of 20, presuming I'm in degrees, is 0 0.051. So this number here, negative, because it's going downwards, negative 0 0.051 kilogram meters per second, which means the y momentum of this has to be the same but positive. Because, once again, the initial, there was no y momentum. So there can't, it has to add up to zero afterwards. So I do know that the component, when this thing bounces off, that it will have an identical size component for its y, and it will be a positive point. What did I say it was? 0, 5, 1 kilogram meters per second. Therefore, they'll add up to zero. So I know that these two have got to have identical y components, just opposite directions. You could find, now in this problem that we have to do, I don't think we have to do this, but you could find this x component, could you not? I mean, you have the the magnitude, you have the angle, use the cosine, you could find out that the x component, the final x component of that purple one, is 0.15, the momentum, times the cosine of 20 degrees. So 
0.15 times cosine 20 degrees. 0.14. So you would have that as being 0.14 kilogram meters per second. All right, so I would know this is 0.14 kilogram meters per second. I do know that the total at the start was 0.6, so I should be able to find the final x momentum here. And if I found that, I should be able to find the angle using the inverse tangent and so on and so forth. Now, I think the problem we're going to talk about in a little bit really only focuses on recognizing that since there was no y momentum here, that the two y momenta for the two objects afterwards have to add up to zero, have to be the same but in opposite directions. But we could take this on from and find, given this x component for the purple one, and the fact that we know what the total x momentum was before the collision, do a quick subtraction. I'll do it. 0 0.6 minus 0.14. And find out that the, per the blue one has a final x momentum of 0.46 kilogram meters per second, which would be a longer arrow. And so you could find its angle and all that. But that's enough base. Now let's go look at the problem itself. So the problem itself starts off, we don't have to worry about any of those angles. The first time they run us through this thing, it is a head-on collision. We'll get to the confusing part in a minute, which hopefully won't be confusing now. So. Incident ball of mass 0.1 kilograms, moving at 1.4, comes in and hits ball B. Negligible friction, head on collision. Now that ball's mass is much larger, 0.5. As a result of the collision, the incident ball slides backwards at 0.7. So it hits and goes backwards. Calculate the speed of the half kilogram ball after the collision. Okay, so we need to know the speed with which this thing leaves the table. Okay, pretty much straightforward conservation of momentum. Momentum initial has to equal momentum final. And initially, I have just this object moving. And it is um, mv, so it's 0.1 kilograms times 1.4 meters per second. Afterwards, I have it rebounding, careful, rebounding. So I have 0.1 kilograms times negative 0.7 meters per second. That's right here. Plus 0.5 times its final velocity, which is what I'm looking for. Okay. Go to a darker pencil or pen. All right, so we have 0.14 kilogram meters per second equals, um, let's see, point, negative 0 0.07 kilogram meters per second plus 0.5 times this final velocity. And we're looking for that final velocity. So we go ahead and solve for it. 0.14 plus, because we're going to add this to both sides, 0 0.07, boom, and then that gives us 0.21 kilogram meters per second equals 0.5 final velocity divided by 0.5. All right, and I have a f final velocity of 0.42 meters per second. And you know, and I know, even if you haven't read ahead, just by looking at the stupid picture, what they're about to make us do they want to probably figure out where it lands. This is where they throw in a kinematics problem. So calculate the horizontal displacement D of the thing. Okay. So let's run through this because um, it's actually going to come up in the next part of the problem as well. In the, the time it takes to fall is all in the Y dimension. So let's deal with that first. In the Y dimension, I have my initial height, my initial velocity, my acceleration, final height, final velocity, and time. 
I'll say that I start at 1.2 meters. I end at the ground. It's meters. This is the important part. This is the important part. It's a horizontal projection, so the initial y velocity is zero. Acceleration, negative 9.8. Don't care about the final velocity, but I am looking for the time. And so we'll go to the third kinematic, which says that the final position equals 1 half gt squared plus voy times t plus your original position. But of course, voy is zero, so this term goes away. This is zero. I'm just going to bring over the initial height, which is 1.2. So I'm going to end up with negative 1.2 equals negative 4.9 t squared. If you're wondering where the 4.9 came from, it's half of g, half of negative 9.8. So if I divide 1.2 divided by 4.9, and then I take the square root, because uh -huh, second square root, second answer, I get 0.49 seconds. So the time it's going to take is going to be 0.49 seconds to get from here to the ground. All right, keep that in mind. In the x dimension, I only have my change in x position, in other words, d, the thing I'm looking for, my x velocity, which is what I found back over here. It's how fast the ball comes off the table. And I have time, which I just figured out. And I only have one equation. And that equation is that the rate times the time equals the distance. And the rate is 0.42, the time is 0.49, and so the distance that it lands is 0.21, we'll say. So that distance is 0.21 meters away from the table. Keep this time in mind, because it's going to come up in a little bit. All right, so we just did A and B. Check, no problem. Then they change gears on us. This is where they bring in the collision that is not head on. Now the target ball C in this case is not 0.5 kilograms. It's also 0.1. But the initial conditions for the ball coming in are the same except the uh, target ball C leaves at an angle. All right. So they got to complicate matters here for us. They can't just tell us how fast the ball leaves. What they tell us is how far it goes until it lands. So if you looked at this from the side, from like right about this angle, you would see the ball leaving at a height of 1.2 and landing. It's the same problem as before, except now it lands at a different distance. D is 0.15 meters. And so we're supposed to back calculate how fast the thing came off the table. It's a pain in the butt, but that's what we have to do. But the good news is it's still the same table top. So it still is gonna take that much time to fall. And I know the distance. So this velocity, this X velocity is gonna equal that distance, 0.15 meters, divided by the time, 0.49 seconds. So the x velocity here, 0.15 divided by 0.49, is 0.306, we'll say, meters per second. So that is the overall velocity of that ball. But we also know it's mass. So it's overall momentum in that direction. All right, so I'm gonna have to draw another picture, I think, because this one's just a little too small. So so ball C here has a momentum of this velocity times its mass, which is 0.1. They tell you it's the same as the other one. 
So it has a momentum of 0 0.0306 kilogram meters per second. Now, that means that that ball has an X component to that momentum and a Y component to that momentum. And it says, then they turn around, they say, calculate the Y component of the incident ball, ball A's momentum immediately after the collision. Well, that would seem like, well, but I'm working with ball C here. But what do we learn from the little thing at the beginning? Since there was no Y momentum here, after the collision, the sum of the two Y momenta have to be zero. So if I can find this, I will. that will tell me the, the momentum of that ball. If I find this, technically it's negative, the other one will be positive. But I need this, and this is the Y component. So, I need the Y component of this momentum. We'll call it for ball C. That's going to be the momentum, 0 0.0306 kilogram meters per second, times the sine of 30 degrees. All right, and that comes out to be 0.153. So y, y ball's momentum, Y component. Did I get that right? Oh, no, I'm off by power 10. It didn't look right. 0 0.0306 times sine of 30. This will do better. Off by power. 0 0.01. There we go. 5 kilogram meters per second, technically negative because it's down. So that means ball A has to have an upwards momentum of exactly the same. So the Y component of ball A's momentum after the collision is a positive 0 0.015 kilogram meters per second. That way when they add, they get zero because the initial Y momentum was zero. They don't actually ask you to find anything in the X, which is nice of them. So once you get this fact done, you're good. 